to someone that is not familiar with an analog mixer like the EPM-8, it is easy to take a quick look and become overwhelmed with the number of knobs, buttons, and connections available for use. To help your potential and easiness, I will break the mixer down into sections that are manageable and repeatable. If you have questions on connections or operation of your mixer after this training, or if you would like additional information, please consult the owner's manual found in the SportSound Standard Announcer's Rack Operation Manual. The first section I will cover is the channel strip. As you can see, each channel strip has the same number of connections and controls. So if you can navigate and manipulate one of them, you just need to repeat this process for the remaining channels. Located at the very top of the mixer, there are XLR connections for microphone level inputs. There are also quarter inch inputs for line level input sources. The quarter inch inputs for inserts, however, are not used on Dectronics audio control systems and will not be covered in this video. A gain control knob is used to increase or decrease the level of the incoming signal. The next four knobs are considered the equalization or EQ section. Use these knobs to adjust the tone of the incoming signal. HF should be used to adjust the high frequency or treble. MF should be used to adjust the mid frequency or mids. The top knob of the mid frequency section allows you to select what frequency will be at the center of your EQ curve and the bottom knob will adjust the level. LF will be used to adjust the low frequency or bass. It is typical to cut the LF on the announcer's microphone for added clarity. This can also be done on any input that is intended for speech only. The auxiliary section contains two knobs and has individual pre-post fade buttons. Both buttons should be set to pre. Aux 1 is wired for the announcer's headphone. Aux 2 is intended for the optional in-ear monitor system but can be used for an additional output if needed and not in use. The pan knob can be used to send the signal to the left or right output. The pan button is set at 12 o'clock because Dectronics systems are output only through the left master out. The PFL button stands for pre-fader level and should be used to see the incoming signal level on the main meters. This will also route the signal to the headphone jack as well as the monitor out L and R jacks. The mute button mutes the channel. The peak LED will illuminate when the signal is close to distorting. This is undesirable. Turn the gain knob counterclockwise to adjust the level down. The channel fader or slider controls the signal level being sent to the main outputs. It should be used as an event volume control knob. Setting the slider to the zero position is a good starting point. The monitor out L and R quarter inch jacks can be used for connecting the optional near field monitor. The aux out 1 and 2 quarter inch jacks are used to send the channel signals to external devices. The stereo 1 and 2 quarter inch input jacks should be used to connect line level input sources. Each stereo input has a channel strip section that has the same functions as the normal channel strips 1 through 8. Mix left and right outputs are the main outputs to the audio system and are controlled by the mix L and R sliders. The quarter inch inputs for inserts and two track L and R RCA inputs are not used on Dectronics audio control systems and are not covered in this video. The phantom power provides 48 volts DC to the microphone inputs and should be on. The quarter inch phone jack can be used to connect a pair of headphones for monitoring. The monitor volume knob adjusts the signal level at the quarter inch monitor out jacks. The headphone volume knob adjusts the signal level at the quarter inch headphone out jack. The aux 1 and 2 pre slash post buttons globally change aux 1 and 2 from pre to post fade. Set both switches to pre. The two track section monitor and two mix buttons are not used on Dactronics audio control systems and will not be covered. The mix slash solo LED meters, commonly referred to as the main meters, show the signal level of the mix outputs. If the PFL active LED is illuminated, these meters show the level of the channel or channels that have their PFL button depressed. The power LED illuminates when the mixer has power supplied to it. The mix L and R faders, commonly called the master faders, 
control the overall level of the mix outputs. Use these to adjust the overall levels of all signals leaving the mixer at the same time. Now that I have covered the basics of the mixer, I will cover the connection configuration of your system when it arrives to site. Channel 1, Mic 1, is the announcer's microphone connected at the I.O. panel. Channels 2 through 5 are all open inputs also connected at the I.O. panel. Channel 6 is a CD player that is connected via the quarter inch input connector. Channel 7 is a wireless handheld. Channel 8 is for the wireless referee mic. Stereo 1 is for video input. Stereo 2 is used for any additional stereo or video inputs. Mix L is the main audio output to the sound system. A mix R is an open audio output. Aux 1 is the output to announcer's headphones connected at the I.O. panel. And finally, Aux 2 is the output used for the optional in-ear monitoring system. The phantom power button and the corresponding 48 volt LED indicator will be on. This is so the muting circuit will work properly on your announcer's interface and should not be turned off for any reason. The final step in setting up your system will be adjusting the gain structure. Do this to each individual channel that is actively being used. The process is the same for each channel, so we will only cover this once and then you will repeat it for the rest of the channels. Make sure that the master fader is all the way down. Next, select the PFL button on the channel you are adjusting to get the signal level to appear on the LED meters. With signal playing on your selected channel, adjust the gain knob until you have a consistent signal around the 0 dB level. This should illuminate all of the green LED indicators. It is acceptable for the level to bounce into the yellow and even the red indicators as long as the peak LED does not illuminate very often. Press the PFL button again to deselect it. Repeat this process on all active channels. Now that you have your gain adjusted properly, bring the fader of all active channels up to zero. Bring the mix left master fader up until you have reached the desired level for your sound system. Remember that during operation, use the channel fader to adjust the relative level of the channel and the master fader to adjust the overall level of all active channels.